Greetings to the children of God all over the planet. When Jesus walked the earth, he preached and taught the gospel. I'm sorry, he preached and taught the gospel of the kingdom. Yet, if you ask any five Christians today what the gospel of the kingdom is, you will probably get five different responses. I wrote this catechism. The Gospel of the Kingdom, 77 Questions and Answers to Explain the Gospel of the Kingdom that Jesus preached and taught long ago. He said in Matthew 24, 14, And this Gospel of the Kingdom shall be preached in all nations, and then the end shall come. These five videos explain the five chapters of this book which can be downloaded for free at drdebrabooks.com. This book is not for sale. It is free. That's D-R-D-E-B-R-A-B-O-O-K-S.com. So you may download this book at any time, or you may listen to me read Chapter 2 to you, which is titled, The Gospel of the Kingdom. Amen. Okay, since this is the second video in the series, I'm going to begin with question 10. The gospel of the kingdom. What is a gospel? The word gospel means to announce a good message. Question 11, what is a kingdom? A kingdom is a place where a king rules. Question 12, what is the kingdom of heaven? The kingdom of heaven is where God rules. What is the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God is where God rules. Question 14, are the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God the same? Yes. And the two terms are used interchangeably in scriptures. The term kingdom of heaven is used more frequently in the Gospel of Matthew, in Mark, Luke, John, and the letters of the New Testament. The term kingdom of God is used more often. For example, Matthew 19, 23 reads, Then said Jesus unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. Jesus uses different words to repeat the same idea in the next verse, which reads, And again I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle, and a needle is to go under a very low bridge, than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. And that's Matthew 19 and 24. Question 15. Why are two terms, the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God, used in the scriptures to describe one thing? A more accurate perception of the kingdom can be acquired when the kingdom is viewed via two terms as opposed to one term. Two descriptive terms are better than one for the same reason that having two eyes is better than having one eye. With two eyes or two terms, depth perception and a sense of perspective are established. With one eye or one term, the view is flattened and it is difficult to perceive how objects are related. Natural and spiritual realities are more clearly interpreted through multiple perceptors. Question 16. If the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God have the same meaning, then does being in heaven mean the same as being in God? Yes. Whatever heaven is, that's where God is. That's the implication of the terms God and heaven in the comprehension of the concept of the kingdom. Whatever God is, that's where heaven is. Where heaven is, that's where God is. When we have access to heaven, we have access to God. When we have access to God, we have access to heaven. 
Being in heaven is the same as being in God. Being in God is the same as being in heaven. The interchangeable terms kingdom of heaven and kingdom of God imply heaven is not a place to be reached only after the death of the body. The gospel of the kingdom teaches us that we have access to heaven now in this lifetime. Just as we have access to God now in this lifetime. Question 17. Is the kingdom referred to by any terms other than kingdom of heaven and kingdom of God? Yes. There are multiple terms for the kingdom. One term for the kingdom is life. Wherefore, if thy hand or thy foot offend thee, cut them off and cast them from me. It is better for thee to enter into life, halt or maimed, rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire. And if thy eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life with one eye, rather than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. That's Matthew 18, 8 and 9. Another term for the kingdom is kingdom of their father. Then the righteous shall shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. That's Matthew 13, 43. Another term for the kingdom is kingdom of Christ and of God. For this ye know that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. That's Ephesians 5 and 5. Another term for the kingdom is his heavenly kingdom. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom to whom be glory forever and ever. That's Second Timothy 4.18. Yet another term for the kingdom is the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For so an interest shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's 2 Peter 1.11. Another term for the kingdom is the kingdom of our God. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. That's Revelation 12 and 10. Question 18. Is one thing referred to by multiple terms anywhere else? In the scriptures. Yes. The ark, which is the wooden box that contains the Ten Commandments, is referred to in the scriptures by multiple terms. There is only one ark that the Old Testament Jews used to carry the Ten Commandments. But that same ark is given several names. And thou shalt put into the ark the testimony which I shall give thee. That's Exodus 25 and 16. And thou, I'm sorry. And thou shalt put it before the veil that is by the ark of the testimony. That's Exodus 30 and 6. And they departed from the mount of the Lord three days' journey, and the ark of the covenant of the Lord went before them in the three days' journey to search out a resting place for them. That's Numbers 10.33. And he said unto the people, Pass on and come past the city, and let him that is armed pass on before the ark of the Lord. And ere the lamp of God went out, I'm sorry, that was Joshua 8 and 7, I'm sorry, Joshua 6 and 7. 
And ere the lamp of God went out in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was, and Samuel was laid down to sleep. That's 1 Samuel 3 and 3. And the temple of God was opened in heaven, and there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament. And there were lightnings and voices and thunderings and an earthquake and great hail. That's Revelation eleven nineteen. So for all you folks on the internet that who are looking for the ark, I just told you where it is. It's in Revelation eleven nineteen. The ark is in heaven with God. Amen. Question nineteen: Is the kingdom inside or outside a person? The kingdom is inside a person. Jesus explained in Luke 17 and 21, Neither shall they say, Lo here or lo there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Question 20, Can the kingdom be seen with the eye? No, the kingdom cannot be observed or seen with the human eye. Luke 17, 20 records Jesus' explanation. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation. Observation means the act of taking notice or the fact of being observed. The kingdom cannot be perceived by any of a person's five senses. Question 21. Is the kingdom clearly manifested or is the kingdom hidden? Jesus gave, gives examples in two parables to demonstrate the hidden aspect of the kingdom. Another parable spake he unto them. The kingdom of heaven is like unto leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meat. I'm sorry, of meal, till the whole was leavened. That's Matthew 13 and 33. He also explained in Matthew 13 and 44, Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field, the which when a man hath found, he hideth, and for joy thereof goeth and selleth all that he hath, and buyeth that field. Question 22. Can the kingdom be perceived mentally or with the mind? No. The kingdom cannot be perceived mentally nor with the mind. The only way a person can understand or see the kingdom is by being born again. In John 3 and 3, Jesus explained this. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Question 23. Since the kingdom can be seen neither with the eye nor with the mind, how did Jesus describe the kingdom to people? Jesus used parables to describe the kingdom because there is nothing in this world that is exactly like the kingdom. Parables are needed to give an approximation of the kingdom's reality. Question 24, what is a parable? A parable is a story that is told to illustrate a comparison. Question 25, what is an example of how Jesus used a parable? Jesus explained the importance of the kingdom by using this parable from Mark 430 through 34. And he said, Whereunto shall we liken the kingdom of God? Or with what comparison shall we compare it? It is like a grain of mustard seed, which, when it is sown in the earth, is less than all the seeds that be in the earth. But when it is sown, it groweth up and becometh greater than all herbs, and shooteth out great branches so that the fowls of the air may lodge under the shadow of it.
and with many such parables oops, spake he the word unto them as they were able to hear it. But without a parable spake he not unto them. And when they were alone, he expounded all things to his disciples. Amen. Every parable has a surface meaning that is instantly comprehensible and a hidden meaning regarding the kingdom that has to be explained to people. The surface meaning of the parable of the mustard seed is something that appears minor can under the correct conditions develop into the greatest of its kind. The hidden meaning of the parable of the mustard seed is that the gospel of the kingdom appears to be more insignificant than the doctrines of other religions. However, just as a mustard seed grows to be greater than the other herbs, the gospel of the kingdom is far greater than other religious doctrines because it, it is the only one that leads to union with God. Union with God is the goal of all religions and religious practices. As a mustard tree towers over other herbs and performs functions, such as shooting out great branches so that the birds can live in it, that other herbs cannot fulfill, so does the gospel of the kingdom perform the function that other religions cannot. The kingdom supplies access and union with God to everyone who wants him. Thank you. Amen.